This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and by Jamaica. Once you go, you know. With over 300 species of birds recorded, 28 endemics, mountains, forests, mangroves, rivers and beaches, this island destination has it all. On this show, we're going to go in quest of crazy birds like northern partouts, and our golden bird for this episode, the crested quail dove. Let's go birding. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean and one of the best island birding destinations in the world. With 28 endemic species of birds that can be found in just a few days, this island has it all. From beaches, to deserts, to mountains, to forests, there's a huge diversity of birding habitats. Come to this fantastic island and get all 28 of these beautiful endemic birds. Let's go birding! Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. Sounds like that's our call for breakfast. So here we are at the Green Castle Estate, situated on this beautiful hilltop on the northern shore of Jamaica. I'm here with trusty local guide, Dwayne Swebe, and we're gonna go in quest of some beautiful endemic birds of this magical island. Yeah, man. Let's go birding. John Allen from Nikon Sport Optics joined us for this show and brought with him the latest and greatest digiscoping equipment to assist us in getting footage of our golden bird, the crested quail dove. We're here in Jamaica and I'm with my trusty edge field scope, but I'm also with John Allen from Nikon. And although you can use your field scope to get some amazing views of birds, it can also double up as a great option for taking excellent images and outstanding video. John, show us how easy this is. Let's do it. All right, simply take the uh, eyepiece off. Yep. Take the FSA bracket. Yeah. All right, look at that, right there. All right, so you take your D3100 camera, or any Nikon SLR camera, right? Here to click right in, turn it on, now the beautiful thing about this is that you can capture stills or here we are, we're trying to capture on video some of the most spectacular birds here in Jamaica. I'm shooting at 500 millimeters, recording video, focus it just like any, like your normal field scope does, right here, and away you go. This is digiscoping, folks. You gotta have a field scope, you need a bracket, you need one of the Nikon SLR cameras. You can capture your images no matter where you're at. It's just really spectacular. So let's go try it in the field. Let's go birding. All right, let's do it. The Oriole family is very well represented on the West Indian Islands. 
In fact, 12 different species of orioles have been recorded on these islands. About half of them are unique or endemic to one particular island. We have, for instance, the Montserrat oriole, we have the St. Lucia oriole, we have the Martinique oriole, and we also have the Jamaican oriole. This oriole is endemic to the island of Jamaica and a tiny island called San Andres. Right here on the northern shore of Jamaica, we've got a pair of Jamaican orioles going about their business of raising a family. The Jamaican oriole is called by the Jamaicans Auntie Katie, and that's in reference to its call. It makes this call that goes Auntie Katie, Auntie Katie, Auntie Katie, and also some people call it the you cheat bird because it says you cheat, you cheat, cheat you, you cheat, you cheat, cheat you, and that's the call that this bird makes. Now what these parent birds will be doing right now is both of them will be heading out actively. It's quite early morning, they're heading out and they're gleaning insects from bromeliads at the top of the trees, but also underneath the bark. And they're taking these insects back and feeding these three hungry nestlings. Now the reason they're feeding them on insects is that these are high in protein and these birds need to fledge as quickly as they can. They are liability when they're small like this, so the quicker that these young birds can get out of the nest, the better. And there's nothing better than a high protein diet of insects. Black-faced grass quits are common across the island, but we've got one building a nest right now. It's bringing in nesting material, the male and the female together, and they're building this untidy looking nest right in this tangled growth here. Black-faced grass quit at the nest. This is an orange quit. It's one of the most common birds on the whole of Jamaica. And ironically enough, this orange quit was the last of the 28 endemics that we filmed on Jamaica. Now that is just preposterous because there are a lot of pretty hard birds like yellow-shouldered grass quit and crested quail dove. Orange quit is a bird that you see all the time, but we left it for last for some reason. And the 28th endemic that we got on film was this orange quit right here. A stunning bird with that blue back and that bright orange throat patch. Orange quit is a good bird, but very common and found all over the island of Jamaica. There are three species of grass quits, little seed eaters found here in Jamaica. We're on the north coast of Jamaica and we've had great views of yellow-faced grass quit, black-faced grass quit, and now we've got a yellow-shouldered grass quit here. And this is one of the birds which is most often missed by people coming to Jamaica. Oh, look when the sun hits that shoulder patch. Bright yellow, what a stunning bird. Yellow-shouldered grass quit right here on the north coast of Jamaica. Awesome. The arrow-headed warbler is probably one of the toughest birds to film and see well in Jamaica. Although fairly common, this endemic likes to frequent the upper canopy. And as with most warblers, neck strain is a common ailment when trying to view it. But once you get to see it, you realize there is no other warbler quite like it. It gets its name from the black streaks on its chest that each resemble the sharp point of an arrowhead. After getting to grips with some of the endemic grass quits and the arrow-headed warbler, we went in quest of two ebony-colored endemic birds. Jamaican crow, Jamaican crow, calling right next to us here. Another endemic found in more of the highland areas of Jamaica, but we've got a Jamaican crow right here. The Jamaican crow is a relatively small crow species. It is closely related to two other West Indian species, the Cuban crow and the white-necked crow of Hispaniola. This is primarily a bird of hill and montane forest, although it does occasionally come down to lower elevations during the dry season. Because it is a forest crow, its diet is very unique, and unlike other crow species, it feeds predominantly on fruit, often in small groups like these birds are doing right now. The voice is very distinctive, and consists of various jabbering and gurgling sounds, which is why it is called by the locals, the jabbering crow. <laughs> Within minutes of finding the Jamaican crows, 
we were lucky enough to come across one of the most threatened birds in the entire country, the Jamaican blackbird. He's got one right here. Let's go see this. Found only in Jamaica, this blackbird is classified as endangered by the International Union for Conservation. There may be as few as 2,000 Jamaican blackbirds left on Earth, and the principal threat to this bird is habitat loss. This species is particularly vulnerable because it is dependent on large trees which support lots of epiphytes and bromeliads. It specifically feeds in these plants, gleaning insects in much the same way as wood creepers and oven birds do in similar habitat on the mainland. So the blackbird has evolved to occupy this niche in the absence of these other species. Moreover, in addition to its rarity, it is the only species in the genus Nesopsa, and it's not closely related to any living blackbird or grackle. So whilst we were very happy to find this rare bird, we really need to ensure that populations do not decline any further. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. This is the north shore of Jamaica, a place called Robins Bay, and the phenomenon behind me is called the Blue Hole. This is where seawater rushes in under limestone rock. It forms this cave and this beautiful blue hole. Underneath this cave is where cave swallows like to roost. Myself and John Allen, we're going to go take a look at these remarkable birds. This is Birding from the Edge. Birding from the Edge, yeah man, let's go. This is Birding from the Edge. It's evening at Green Castle Estates, and we're heading out to look for a nocturnal bird called the Northern Potu. This is a bird which is very difficult to find over its range from Costa Rica all the way up to Mexico and Central America. But here, in Jamaica, it can be quite easy to find if you know where to look. Northern potus are generally found sitting on fence posts along the road leading up to Greencastle Estate. But as is often the case in birding, nothing is guaranteed. And we walked up and down the road for hours with absolutely no sign of the bird. We had given up hope and were returning back to the lodge when in the distance we heard the distinctive call of the Northern potu. John, John, there's the call. That's him calling. But what a trip to try and locate the bird. We had to cross several fields, scaling barbed wire fences along the way in the darkness, until finally, my torch picked up the characteristic red glow of a pair of eyes. shoulder is a northern potu here in northern Jamaica. Look at this awesome and unique bird of the night skies of this island. This northern potu or northern potu as some people call it is an extension of the branch that it sits on. Sitting here in the open waiting for moths and beetles to fly out and will then sally forth grab those beetles and moths with this huge oversized mouth. This is the kind of stuff that northern potus will eat. When you actually look at the bird sitting there, you don't get a real idea of how big this mouth is, but it's a cavernous mouth for the size of this bird, and he gobbles up insects, moths, and beetles in flight, and then returns back to that perch. What a beautiful and unique species and Jamaica remains one of the best places in the world to see this unbelievable bird. So wasn't that just wonderful? <laughs> we had just about given up. We'd driven up and down the road. We had walked up and down the road. 
no luck. And we said, let's just give it one last try down the road. And we heard this guttural call coming from the depths of this forest here. Lo and behold, there was the eye shine. How was that, John? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Isn't it a bizarre bird? Seeing those red eyes glow from about 100 yards away was right. incredible. And then we kept thinking we couldn't get any closer. And then uh, James kept taking us and taking us and until we were literally, what, 15 feet from him? Amazing, it was wasn't incredible. it? Incredible. Good job. Well, stay with us because there's a lot more to come on Nikon's Birding Adventures. When I get back from a birding trip, there's no better way for me to practice my birds in my home state of Florida than teaching my daughter here in the outdoors. It's so easy to find a particular bird on your Audubon Guides app. So there are three simple steps to identifying this gray catbird. First, we click on our location. We know we're in Florida, so we click done. We know it's in May, so we click done. And then we input as much information as we can about the bird. First of all, the shape. We know that it's a perching bird. We then go down. We know that the color is gray, so we click on that. We don't know the habitat, the location, the region. We leave it blank, but the size. We know that it's 5 to 13 inches, and we simply click search. And it will bring down a narrowed down list of all the birds found in North America. We can then narrow it down further by clicking the common ones. We can go in there and we can find our gray cat bird. And then we can even click further, look at some similar species, so that we make sure that we've got the bird that we're looking for. Available on iTunes for iPhone, iPad and iPod Touch, and also on the Android market. You don't need to have an iPad to use the Audubon Guides apps. You can use them on your iPhone and also on your iPod Touch. The dove species are fairly well represented in Jamaica, with several restricted range species like Caribbean doves, white crowned pigeons and Zenaida doves being pretty common throughout the island. Dove hunting is a popular sport amongst the elite in Jamaica, but it is strictly controlled with expensive permits and strict bag limits. We got the chance to interview the president of BirdLife Jamaica, Ricardo Miller, who also happens to be heavily involved in dove hunting research. A lot of people sometimes turn their nose up at, at hunting, for example. But to be honest, hunting really um, brings about a lot of conservation. We allow no shooting off um, any endemic birds. We have a few endemic doves and they might be enticing for a hunter, but it's definitely a no-no. One bird that you definitely cannot hunt in Jamaica is the crested quail dove, the hardest endemic bird to find on the entire island. Eccles Down Road in Portland Parish at the foothills of the John Crow Mountains is the single best location for this tough species. Early mornings are key as the birds forage on the ground then and we split up into three groups to maximize our chances of finding it. Of all the people to find the bird was Murdoch, our driver, who spotted the bird whilst taking a nap in his vehicle. It worked out just perfectly. I had the small camera, John had the digiscope camera, Jeff had the camera with the long lens, and we were all split up along the road, and the bird landed right between the three of us. And we all managed to get different angles of the superb and unique species. How amazing was that? We had this crested quail dove right between us. I'm on that side. These guys are on this side. We've got a digiscope going on the bird. We've got a big camera going on the bird. I've got a wide angle camera all on the bird and the bird's right between us going backwards and forwards like that. One of the hardest birds, in fact, without a doubt, the hardest bird to see in the whole island of Jamaica, the crested quail dove, our golden bird for this show. Great job, guys. Awesome. That was such a great bird. You see the way that it walks with that bobbing tail? 
I wouldn't have feel satisfied if we only got it perched. Right. Yeah, it's just an amazing bird. Absolutely amazing. Now tell me, Ricardo, why is this bird called mountain witch by the Jamaican people? That's a good question. I have a strong feeling it's that call. It has okay. a very mournful call. It's more often heard than seen. And once they see it, it's, it's just unmistakable. Uh, so I, I figure that's pretty much where it came from. Amazing. Incredible to think that of all 28 endemic birds found on Jamaica, this particular bird right here is the bird that is most often missed. But the best place in the entire world to see this bird is right here in Ecclestown. I was just glad that we actually got it walking because I really wanted you guys to see this. It just have this really weird walk that just makes it stand out as a dove. Um, there's no other bird on the island that walks like that. But why does it? Probably just the mechanics of its legs. Maybe it's all the reggae music. <laughs> Dancing to all the reggae music. <laughs> That's a good idea. This crested quail dove is Jamaica's only dancing bird, man. <laughs> I'll remember that. Never been before